today i am going to discuss about the design procedure of built up members built up members comprises of two or more rolled steel section in fact when uh, a load when a compressive load is coming into picture sometimes the load is so heavy that a single rolled section cannot withstand that much load because there is a limitation of maximum size of the rolled section therefore when load becomes very high we may have to go for uh, built up section comprising of two or more number of sections this is not only because of the high load but also sometimes we need equal radiation of gyration in both the direction because in uh, rolled steel section we generally see that uh, radius of gyration in one direction is much higher than the other direction therefore the uh, uh, buckling will happen about the weaker section first and as a result the uh, load carrying capacity of the member member means the steel load section member will be less about a particular direction to arrest that generally we provide a built up section where higher radius of gyration can be achieved in both the direction and thereby we can increase the load carrying capacity uh, by providing such type of built up members. Now, coming to reason as I told that uh, one is that uh, the built up sections provide large cross sectional area which cannot be furnished by single rolled steel section right. Then built up section provides special shape and depth. The special shape and depth facilitate connections between different members and another important thing is that the built up section provides sufficient large radius of gyration in two directions. Therefore, we generally prefer built up members in case of long length of uh, long length of uh, column and with high load. Say for example, if we consider a channel section as a compression member then we know if this is ZZ and if this is YY axis if we consider then IZZ is much higher than IYY right or RZZ is much higher than RYY much higher than RYY. Therefore, the chances of buckling about YY axis will be much earlier than about ZZ axis. So, if we provide built up member then what we can do we can increase the radius of gyration by by providing another member and with a certain spacing. So, if we do that then we can see that IYY the new um, IYY of the section will become much higher and the built up member generally we provide in such a way that IZZ become IYY means we will vary this spacing between two members to such an extent that when IZZ become IYY up to that we will vary right or RZZ become RYY. So, in this way we provide the uh, uh, the configuration of the built up member. Now, now examples of built up member if we see here we can see that uh, we can use four angle section four angle section and to make a box type of uh, cross section by the use of certain type plate which is called generally lacing or batten that I will come later. So, this is one um, example where we can use built up section uh, to increase the I x x and I y y of the section. Another different type of built up members are used another example is that when two channel sections are placed back to back then also uh, the built up members means are connected with the uh, lacing or batten member. So, this is one example 
Next is channel section when uh, facing face to face. This way also we can provide a built up member. Then I section with uh, channel section at the top as per the requirement. Sometimes we see the um, requirement and according to that requirement we may have to provide that I section with uh, a uh, channel section at the top. Sometimes two I sections are provided to withstand the load. Sometimes uh, in case of plate guarder we generally see that I sections are provided with additional plate. So, number of plates are added as per the requirement uh, and in this way we increase the uh, load carrying capacity of the uh, member. Generally I section with plate guarder means uh, with plates we generally provide when the bending moment of the member is become um, becomes high. That means, when a uh, member is under flexural action then because of bending stress uh, may be uh, the single I section is not capable of taking that much load. So, in that case we may have to provide the additional plates as per requirement. So, this is another type of means another example of built up member. It's, this is an another type of built up member which is consisting of four angles which is called star angle. Now, coming to um, design of built up compression member. So, now if we see the design of built up compression member the steps first we provide the means we find out the effective length. the step 1 what we do is we find out the effective length from the actual length and end condition. That means, LE we can find out from actual length and the end condition from that first we will find out what is the effective length. Then we, we generally uh, assume certain value of cylinderness ratio lambda as 30 to 60 for built up section. Generally, we pro consider less value of lambda because, uh, because of the built up section the um, radius of gyration is quite high and therefore, the cylinderness ratio we can consider uh, quite less means it may be from 30 to 60 which will be sufficient. Then in step 3 we find the compressive stress F C D from table 9 C because the buckling class for built up member is C therefore, we can use table C and corresponding to table C for a particular value of lambda whatever we consider we can find out the F C D value uh, for a given uh, grade of steel. So, once we get the F C D value we can find out the required area A which is P by F C D where P is the uh, axial compressive force. Uh, which is acting on the member. So, once we get the uh, area of the compressive member then we can uh, choose a built up section as per the requirement. It may be channel section back to back, it may be um, channel section face to face, it may be I section as per the requirement we have to decide what type of sections we are going to provide and what is the arrangement. So, accordingly we will find out the required area uh, or, uh, means uh, we will find out the area from, from that um, uh, considered section and then we will arrange the section in such a way maybe if we use two channel section back to back then we will arrange the section in such a way that the I x x or I z z become I y y. So, that we can find out the value of S, S is the spacing between two section. So, here our job is to find out the value of S in such a way that I z z will become I y y. Once this is found we can find out the R minimum value which will be practically uh, more or less equal R a R z z and R y y. So, from the minimum value of R the radius of gyration we can calculate the lambda the cylinderness ratio. 
that is L e by R. So, from the cylindrical ratio again we can go back to table 9 C and we can find out the value of F C D corresponding to particular um, lambda and uh, grade of steel. Right. So, once we get F C D value we can find out the design compressive strength P D which is A E by A E into F C D. So, design compressive strength we can find out and uh, if we see the design compressive strength is more than the axial compressive strength acting externally then it is ok otherwise we can go for a higher section and we can repeat from step 5 to step 7. That means, if we see the design strength is less than the uh, actual uh, load then we have to go for next higher section and we have to repeat the steps. So, that we get P d as greater than P and then we can stop. So, this is how we can find out the section size of the member and then we can find out the uh, distribution of the means uh, the arrangement of the section that what, what will be the spacing between two uh, members. This is what in the built up section we do. After that we have to design the lacing system or batten system uh, as we provide because uh, lacing system or button system along the length uh, we provide to tie the members uh, the compression members in a proper way. So, that the members become this compression member the built up members become parallel to each other it has equidistance throughout its length and the uh, force uh, coming into the uh, member uh, uh, become uh, means even way means evenly distributed. So, this is what we will do. Now, we will go through one example uh, through which we will be able to understand how to design a built up section. Say for example, in this case uh, we have to design a column laced column of 10.5 meter long to carry a factor load of 1000 kilo Newton. The column is restrained in position but not in direction at both ends. Now, it has been told that use two channel section because we have lot of options we can use I section we can use uh, angle section and also it has been told that use two channel section placed back to back. We may uh, unless it is told we may use also um, face to face or other way we can use. So, these are the constant has been given that we have to use channel section and back to back. So, what we need to do here is we have to find out what is the section size of the channel and what will be the distance between these two channel section that is S spacing between those these two channel section. This is what we have to find out at the moment after that lacing uh, design we will do later. So, so to do this what we will do as per the steps we can first find out what is the uh, effective length and then what will be the uh, 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 what is the uh, approximate area as per the requirement of the uh, lambda so this this is what we will try to find out so first from the given uh, problem we can find uh, we know that the L e the effective length is 1 into 10.5 that is 10.5 meter right. So, that can be shown here that that effective length we can find out as 1 into 10.5 that is 10.5 meter and we can consider either some lambda as say 30 to 50 or 60 or directly we can consider some compressive stress design axial compressive stress that also we can assume. In steps I have shown that we can assume some lambda value and then we can find out the F C D value, but 
directly also we can assume some FCD value and we can find out the required area. So, if we assume some FCD value say for example, in this case 150 MPa then required area A will be 1000 kilo Newton divided by 150 that will be this 666.67 millimeter square. So, to accommodate this area we need to provide ISMC 250 to ISMC 250. So, if we provide two ISMC 250 let us see what will be the uh, combined area and its properties. So, if we see that relevant properties are given here that one is the for ISMC 250 uh, area is 3867 millimeter square R y is 23.8 and R z is 99. So, here you see R z is much greater than R y. So, if we use a single section single section then it will buckle about weaker axis that is y y axis. So, to resist that uh, we use two section right. Now, thickness of flange of this channel is 14.1 which will be required for calculation then I z z and I y y is also given in S p 6 from which which has been taken then C y y is 23 point uh, 23 millimeter C y y means the C g distance and B the width of flange is 80 mm. So, area provided will be 7734 millimeter square we need 6667 millimeter square means as per the assumptions uh, we can try with this. So, we are trying little higher uh, of this section and that is 7734. Now, if we try to calculate the uh, slenderness ratio then we can see that L by R z will be this one. Why we are calculating L by R z? If we see when two channel sections are placed say back to back then this R z will not increase R z will be R z z will be constant this cannot be increased that will be same, but we can increase the R y R y will be increased R y was uh, quite less which can be increased for the combined section up to R z z. So, R y will be uh, means assuming that the spacing of these two sections will be such that R y y will become R z z and as we cannot increase the value of R z z for this particular section by the change of S. So, we first calculate the R z z value and then slenderness ratio value and then we will find out the design compressive stress. So, as per clause uh, 7.6.1.5 if lacing member is used then its slenderness ratio is increased by 5 percent. So, if we increase by 5 percent then slenderness ratio is coming 110 which is less than 180. So, uh, this is ok means from slenderness ratio point of view the member is fine. Then what in what we can do for for this slenderness ratio and for a particular grade of steel for this case this is f y 250 m p a and buckling class c as it is uh, built up section we can find out the value of f c d. f c d value we can find out from table 9 c and in uh, table 9 c for 110 the f c d value is 94.6 and for 120 f c d value is 83.7. So, by interpolation we can find out the f c d value for 110.91 which is coming 93.61. Therefore, the load carrying capacity we can find out which will be the uh, area of the combined section into F C D value which is coming 723.98 kilo Newton 
and this is less than 1000 kilonewton that means it is not safe because the design strength p d we are getting this value and the axial compressive uh, compressive force coming on the column is 1000 kilonewton so the section whatever we have chosen is not safe so what we need to do we have to try with other section other section means the next higher section we can try so next higher section is ismc 300 so if we choose ismc 300 then we can see the relevant properties of the section as the cross sectional area of individual section is this ryy is this rzz is this uh, remember that rzz is increasing from the uh, earlier one also a is increasing so load carrying capacity will definitely increase then izz is this iyy is this and cyy b uh, from table uh, 2 of sp6 we can found as this now area uh, of the combined section will become 2 into the area of individual section which will become 9128 millimeter square. So, the uh, cylinderness ratio of the section will become L by RZZ that is uh, becoming 88.91 right. So, cylinderness ratio is coming 88.91 and the effective cylinderness ratio will be 5 percent more than the original one. So, that is becoming 93.35 and this is less than 180. So, from cylinderness ratio point of view the section chosen is ok. Right. So, the effective cylinderness ratio we could find. Now, once we find the effective cylinderness ratio we can find out the F C D value that is found from IS 800 2007 of table 9 c. Table 9 c is for buckling class c and for uh, f y is equal to 250 the f c d value is given as 121 uh, for uh, lambda is equal to 90 and 107 for lambda is equal to 100. So, by interpolation we can find out f c d value as 116.31 MPa. Right. Now, the load carrying capacity we can find out load carrying capacity will be the area of the section combined section into F C D value. So, if we put those value the area of cross section of the combined section into the design compressive stress 116.31 then we can find out the load as 1061.68 kilo newton which is more than 1000 kilo newton. So, the section whatever we have chosen is ok. Right. So, we can provide two channels section back to back and channel section will be the section whatever we have chosen that I s uh, m c 300. Right. Now, next question is that what will be the spacing? What will be the spacing of these two channel? So, as I told the spacing will be decided on the basis of the equal strength from each direction. Now, as we have seen that I x x or I z z cannot be increased that means, R z z cannot be increased. So, maximum strength can be achieved with respect to R z z maximum strength can be achieved with respect to R z z. So, coming to this if we see here that if we have two section now, here i z z will be say 2 into i z individual i z and a combined a will be 2 into a dash right. So, r will be the combined r will be basically 2 i z dash by a dash because i by r. So, this is becoming i z dash by a dash which is the r z z dash this is the radius of gyration of the individual section. That means, 
the radius of gyration of the individual section if it is r dash z z then this will become r z z the radius of gyration of the combined section as well right so there is no scope of increasing the value of r z z that means maximum strength can be achieved with this radius of gyration now what will be the radius of gyration of i y y means uh, uh, about y y that we have to find out right now radius of gyration about y y y will be will make will make in such a way that it will be more than or equal to r z z that means the the weaker section which was y y about y y that can be increased by the use of a particular uh, spacing and r y y can be increased up to r z z. So, r y y varies and it can be increased by the increase of spacing and that is so what will be the spacing. So, spacing we can find out if we make equal i y y of the combined section and i z z of the combined section as equal. So, i z z of the combined section will be 2 i z z right and i y of the combined section will be i y y plus a into if this is s then s by 2 plus c y y square right because i y y we could find out from this and we are transferring to this a r square. So, from this if we put the value we can find out the value of s by putting the value of i z z as 6362.6 into 10 to the 4 and i y y value is 310.8 into 10 to the 4 plus a r square 4564 into s by 2 plus 23.6 this is the c g distance. So, from this I can find out value of s as 183.1 that means if i put s the spacing between two section as 183.1 then equal strength can be achieved so we can provide say s is equal to little higher say 184 that means r y y be little higher than r z right so the spacing between these two members should become 184 this is what we have calculated in this slide. So, the spacing between these two member will become uh, 184 and ISMC 300 section will be used. So, in today's lecture what we could see is that uh, the design steps and design procedure of a uh, built up section and a workout example has been done to demonstrate the procedure for designing a built up section. In this example we have restricted up to the calculation of the section size that means what will be the section size and its spacing spacing between two section right up to this we have discussed today next day we will uh, discuss about the lacing member thank you